Hey everybody, Professor Klein here, back in the Human Anatomy Lab at Ohio University to bring you a video on the biliary system. And with this system, I'm at the whiteboard to bring you guys the full pathway. But before I begin, make sure you hit like and subscribe to this channel, and that is much, much appreciated. Okay, let's talk about the biliary system. Biliary, what does that mean? Well, it means bile. Now, bile is a substance that will emulsify fat. So if you think about fat entering your body, let's say you eat something with a lot of fat content and it goes down the esophagus here, which would be our first part, the esophagus, and that food's probably got some carbohydrates, some fats, some, maybe even some protein in there, but we're focused on the fat content. Now that's coming down and it gets all mixed up in the stomach. Now the stomach's right here, and within the stomach, that food is now called chyme. Chyme is more of a paste, and that, that's moving through here, and it's gonna leave and go into the duodenum. So I'm just gonna write D off to the side here for duodenum, and that's the first part of the small intestine. Now why am I telling you this? Well, this is where the fat is at. So I'm gonna write fat in here. Fat, fat, right, so for the fat, the lipids to be digest or um, absorbed, they have to be fully digested and bile is a substance that's produced in the liver. This would be the liver right here. And emulsifies the fats or breaks them into smaller pieces. So the biliary system is explaining how does bile get from where it's produced in the liver to where the fat is down here. That's the question we're answering today. Now let me bring in a model here and got the liver. So where, where would this liver be? Well, if it's on me here, I got my EKG shirt on for the heart lab this week, but ignore the shirt. And the liver would sit right about here. The diaphragm would be over top. So H-I-J-K-L-M-N would be the diaphragm, right? And then the liver would be right about here. This is kind of a small liver for my body size maybe double this, and that would be the size of the liver. But what you'll notice is the liver is brown underneath it. There's something green. This is the gallbladder. So I got the gallbladder in green up here. Now what does the gallbladder do? It stores and concentrates bile. So the liver and the gallbladder, they're partners. They're hanging out together. I'd say the, the liver is uh, Batman and the gallbladder is Robin, right? The gallbladder is much smaller. It doesn't do as much of a job as the liver does in producing the bile, but it does play a major role in storing and concentrating it. So the gallbladder is gonna play a major role as well. So we got this liver, and let's say I take a chunk of the liver. Now we got the liver lobule model. Check out my other video on the liver lobule model. But if I zoom in here real close for you, and I grab the magic probe, and I point at these cells within the liver, these are called hepatocytes, and this is where bile is actually produced. So like real close at these cells, they are all throughout the liver and what happens is bile is produced on those and then it travels down this green narrow pathway called the bile caniculi bile caniculi here as it travels to a green we'll call it a green drain it's called the bile duct so imagine all these hepatocytes producing bile they merge and they eventually get to a bile duct. Now this is a zoomed out picture. 
and anything you see in green is a bile duct. So you got a bile duct here, you got a bile duct down here, over here, over here. They're all over. And all those bile ducts will merge and merge and eventually merge into two major ducts. And this is the first part of the biliary system to where we have a left and a right hepatic duct. So I'll write this up here. This would be the left hepatic duct. And this one over here would be the right hepatic duct. Right and a left, hepatic means liver, the two ducts carrying bile coming from the liver. Now they're going to merge and they will merge right when they leave the liver. And I'm going to switch colors here so that you can see the differentiation between the ducts and where they merge. And let's go red. I'll just choose red here if you guys see this new duct. Now anytime a right and left merge, we use the word common. So this is now the common hepatic duct. Common hepatic duct right here. And stop the video, go back if you're confused on how we got here because from here we're going down to the duodenum, but this is now the common hepatic duct. And just a little guy right here as they merge together because there's gonna be another duct. And I said before, the gallbladder stores in concentrates bile. So there's gonna be a duct that travels over to the gallbladder. Now the gallbladder has this cystic duct. So I'm going to swing this one down and write it over here, cystic duct. And the cystic duct, it's a two-way street. You can go into the gallbladder, store it, concentrate it, or bio can leave the gallbladder and go on out. Now let's say we're going out the gallbladder and it merges with the common hepatic duct right here and forms our final duct to get down the duodenum. This one's gonna be a long duct here, very long duct. And this one's called the common bile duct. Anything green here, common bile duct. Sometimes you're, it's referred in textbooks as just the bile duct, but be careful we saw another bile duct here, right? This guy. Don't get confused with the bile duct inside the liver versus the bile duct outside the liver down towards this area. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, Professor Klein has not mentioned what this is right here. Any guesses? This is the pancreas. The pancreas is right here. Pancreas is right underneath the stomach, left side of the body, right? And if I were to bring in another model here, this model is showing the same stuff, magic probe, the liver, the gallbladder, the duodenum with the stomach cut and then the pancreas in the middle. And what you'll notice with this, is that they're all together. So with this picture, I've kind of separated it so you could see the different structures and we could really see the ducts. But in your body, it's all smashed together. But track it with me here. This one would be the right hepatic duct. Tucked underneath this blood vessel would be the left hepatic duct. As they merge, where my probe is right now, this is the common hepatic duct. Going over or coming from the gallbladder is the cystic duct, this one right here. 
the cystic duct and the common hepatic duct merge into the common bile duct, which takes us all the way down to the duodenum right here. But I mentioned the pancreas because the pancreas actually has its own duct called the pancreatic duct that secretes pancreatic enzymes and it will merge right into that common bile duct. So let me get back to the whiteboard here. And if you're not drawing this out already, draw this out. It's gonna help a ton to actually put pen to paper, use some different colors, invest in some colored pencils or crayons or whatever it might be, pens, and draw this out so that it makes sense to you. But if I'm down here, and I've got, I'll use red here. Let me go with red. I'm trying to mix the colors up here for you. This duct coming over. Would be the pancreatic duct. And right before, right before it enters, and I'm going to make a little slip here. Right before it enters, it merges. So we got the pancreatic duct coming over. We got the common bile duct coming down. And they're going to enter into the duodenum at a place called the hepatopancreatic ampulla. Hepatopancreatic ampulla also called the sphincter of Odi. Now this ampulla, like an amphitheater, is going to open up. So this actually bubbles out and there's a few other structures in this location. But the main thing we learn is the hepatopancreatic ampulla where these things are spitting out into the duodenum. Once that happens. You've got, whoops, drop the marker there. Another marker here. You've got bile. You've got pancreatic enzymes coming in. Those are going to help digest fats and carbs and proteins and everything else that you would eat as your macronutrients. But there's one more duct here. Don't forget, there's something called the accessory duct. And the accessory duct is going to sneak its way up and around the other ducts. And I'll just label it as A here, AD, accessory duct. Sneak its way up and around and enter the duodenum as well. So let's say something's wrong with the pancreatic duct. Well, there's an extra duct, the accessory duct, that gets you up and into the duodenum with those pancreatic enzymes. And on this model, you can actually see that. Look down in here. You can see the pancreatic duct, and then you see this extra one coming off to the side. That would be your accessory duct going into the duodenum. All right, that has been your video on the Billy Airy system. Draw this out. I challenge you to be able to draw this, label it, and explain what's going on with the Billy Airy system because it's a really important system in the body to know. All right, I'm Professor Klein from the Human Anatomy Lab at Ohio University. Thanks for watching.